Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica, and I'm here with Leia Vanessa Bahar. We are two of the co-founders of All Limite. We are a collective of theater and performance artists formed in the U.S. with satellite members all over the globe. Along with so many people around the globe, we are at the limit. We are at the limit of what is tolerable. We are up against the borders and the violence of any state. We've been connecting with company members around the world and other artists who are in the struggle and use art as a means of communication and resistance. With our talks and exchanges, we wanna bring our audiences firsthand accounts of what our friends are experiencing in their homelands and talk about what place art has in their struggles. Today, we are speaking with Ahmed Tobasi, an artist who is part of the Freedom Theater it started as a project by the revolutionary Arna Merahamis, which used theater and art to address the chronic fear, depression, and trauma experienced by children in Janine refugee camp in Palestine. The Freedom Theater was officially founded in 2006 by Anna Merahamis' son, Giuliano Merahamis. We remember them today as we speak with Ahmed Tobasi about what is happening on the ground in Jenin and their latest street performance that sent out shockwaves of resistance. Welcome Ahmed Tobasi. Hi, and thank you. Thanks for coming and joining us today. Uh, tell us a little bit about where you are, what time it is and how you're doing. Uh, now, uh, I am in my office at the Freedom Theater in Jenin camp, West Bank, Palestine. And you see, I have to say that like Freedom Theater, uh, Jenin Camp, Jenin, West Bank, Palestine, because you know, you, uh, uh, it's very divided and uh, all these names, uh, anyone could not know where this place is located. Uh, so it's very important to mention Palestine and West Bank because there is Gaza and all this division uh, as geographic and names and uh, uh, make it a bit more difficult uh, that we will know what we are, where we are, and what we're talking about. Especially, uh, not long time ago, I had to, uh, by accident, be in shock when I heard that some people still mixing between Palestine and Pakistan. I thought it was a joke. But no, it surprised me that, yeah, some old people or people not really that much engaged of what is going on in the world, but still, it's, it's, it's true. People still mixing between Palestine and Pakistan, uh, which is uh, very disappointed uh, in this time with this technology. Uh, and, you know, this time as a Palestinian, like, I think all the world were very tired and waiting uh, a little breath after this coronavirus, but I don't know, Palestinian, I'm sure uh, uh, they will go to the heaven directly without, without any interrogation from the, let's say, God about what we did in our life, because I, I mean, we pay and we pay back each day after like a one and a half a year with Corona situation, no money, all that difficulties as a Palestinian, we don't have a vaccination, we don't have a medical system. And directly we enter a war, like a very wild, brutally war that uh, Israeli each day uh, attacking uh, Gaza, Palestinian. Yesterday, uh, three people get killed just because an uh, Israeli forest storm in the, in the streets of Jenin and you know for them they can kill hundreds uh, of Palestinians uh, and not any soldier will get like injured or hurt or whatever and that's that's where we arrive today they as an Israeli they they improve for the world and for us they really believe that we are palestinians we are not the humans we are not deserve or our life it's not important like i mean if you watch what is going on each day i really feel like an aunt i feel like a palestinians like an aunt and they just i mean, walk or step 
uh, on us and it's not doesn't make any change for what is going on in in life in world and this is what is really provoking me uh, uh, if any Israeli get hurt even or crying or uh, any child in any settlement not to sleep that night because of the sound of the rockets, they will make plays, movies, uh, books, uh, how the Israeli child in that settlement cannot sleep that night while in one week we had 300 uh, uh, people get killed and most of them were children. Oh. Our children each day just goes and we, we try, actually, it's very sad. We try to, 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 to support ourselves and we say they are martyrs and they're going to heaven and we pay for the homeland. But for me, this is bullshit. We lose our people. We lose our families. And all, all these promises, it's in the future. And I'm not sure still if we're going to have it or not. But, you know, they lie at us just to, to, to be strong uh, uh, and deal with this kind of situation. Like even uh, uh, the mothers of um, the martyrs, sometimes they don't have tears to cry. Like, I mean, the old tears is, is finished. Like, and each day we cry and like, okay, so what? So now, sadly, I hear from people, it looks like they are strong or they try to be strong. But for me, it's very sad that the Palestinians arrived to the point that they are really ready to get like, they're asking, we finish or they finish. I and mean, we cannot just go on like this uh, each day, attacks, invasions. We are agree, if they can finish us, let's finish us once. Uh, and for us, yeah, I mean, I agree too. It's like, how long are we gonna live this life? Me, my parents, my new generation, they're gonna again come and they live the same life. And I'm really, uh, 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 I never thought about this idea to bringing more children to this life, but no, I have now uh, many question marks. Why I need to bring more people to this life? Or we as a Palestinian, yani, I don't know why, to make them suffer or to just uh, um, uh, make our proud more that, yeah, we're gonna continue fight. We are tired, yani. I'm, I'm, I am very tired. I'm not saying I'm giving up but I'm, I'm very tired. Uh, I'm very busy all the time. I'm very busy with all these kind of thinking, like I'm not sure where I should focus, my future, my life, my family, my work, my students, uh, my program, uh, my homeland, my government, my, my, my I, I don't know, my street, my land, I don't know, I don't know. I'm very busy 24 hours, like before, before the coronavirus uh, and before this war, we, uh, we, I think we were okay. We, in a way, we forgot uh, occupation. We forgot what is going on and we have been living like with the situation. But when coronavirus came and again, life, uh, occupation bring us back face to face of reality, we wake up again like, whoa, we have, we, we tried actually to forget but no, I mean, it's no way. We're going to hit the fact each time anything will happen, especially Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I want to introduce my co-host here, Leia Vanessa Bashar, who is my dear friend and a co-founder of Alimite and has been to visit you in Jenin. So I wanted to ask her for a little context for people who haven't been there. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your first time meeting uh, Tobasi there? <laughs> um, well, Tobasi was kind enough to host me when I came to the theater. And uh, obviously to get to Janine is not easy. There are many different ways to get there. And uh, that alone is already a tale of how the story begins. Uh, mm -hmm. Just entering already is a challenge. And you definitely stop through checkpoints and getting in was, was an, an ordeal. But once in there, you realize that, you know, the world is, is still moving. Uh, everybody is living. Everybody is going on. And even though there, is a, there are so many warnings, especially to Israelis, not to enter, you, it's nothing that you're entering that isn't existing all over the world. There's people living their lives, people going to school, people. So, you, you know, there's a feeling that you're entering something dangerous into a zone, a war zone, and in reality you're entering into 
you know, a, a whole community, a whole uh, culture. And so once I arrived there, uh, rolling, you know, you know, driving through the streets and coming to the theater itself actually was one of the most beautiful sights that I had ever had uh, while being in Palestine. It is definitely uh, a place of resistance and you can see it even before stepping in. Um, when you drive up actually in Janine, it, you know, sticks out mm -hmm. and the colors and the murals and, and, and the invitation, there's almost an invitation to come in and to, to really find your creative self, to find your creative identity and to explore. And in the middle of Janine, where there isn't much of that, this is existing like this oasis, this creative oasis. Um, so its existence alone is, is resistance. And you note it even before you get there. So that was my first experience even just arriving. Um, and I had always wanted to go there, obviously, because, you know, the legendary tales and Giuliano mm -hmm. and 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 everything that had happened. But when you arrive there, you realize that it's it's less of a story and it's more of a movement. And it's not about just making theater, but it's about existing in the middle of occupation and challenges and risk every day, daily, all the time, not just to make theater, but to make a point that you're existing you're alive and you're going to resist in whatever manner. And I think it was you, Tobasi, that, you know, it's like using that art as a weapon. And this was the most, the strongest weapon I have seen in the Middle East, to be honest, um, upon arrival. And I had hoped we, had go, we would go back, but obviously Corona happened shortly mm -hmm. after. Uh, and we have been in touch ever since and, you know, trying to make sure that we stay connected to this movement in Palestine, because obviously the arts are, the arts are considered, <laughs> you know, a creative field, but actually it's a field full of political uh, and emotional, spiritual resistance. Um, it's not just creativity or, you know, an elementary way to express yourself. It's actually, you know, a life or death situation, especially in Palestine. So thank you for hosting me there and thank you for always being open to talking about it. I wanted to go yeah. back to what you were saying, um, Tobasi, about not knowing of all the possible things you could be doing, feeling overwhelmed with all those things, because you all recently did a street performance, I understand, um, which is a bold choice, a strong choice, a risk-taking choice. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, that performance and the message in that show and why you did it and how it went? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, it's, it comes by all this, like some of this kind of pressure that you are the freedom theater and you are artist. Okay, so what are you going to do now and how are you going to react uh, for Gaza, uh, which is also for me a problem. Like the artist, normal artist has, has to have a, a normal situation where he can search, create, feel uh, uh, and organize this kind of reaction as an artist. But here, it's, you have no time, you have no space, you have to react quickly, and then you will be also responsible about your reaction, which is not like, you know, an artist, he have a space to react in a way that he feel. But in all this pressure, I was thinking, yeah, okay, what, 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 should, what, what we have to do as a freedom theater? What we, what, what we will see about Gaza? Because, you know, also there is another artist, another organization in Palestine. They are smart. They don't have pressure to find a way how to react to Gaza, like collecting money or some artist will make a concert, play a music, a guitar, and then it's easy. But as a freedom theater, we have many responsibility that we have to really be careful how we're going to react because we don't have this kind of love relationships, even with everyone in Palestine, even with the Palestinians even with the PA, even with the other theaters, even with, with other artists. So they're watching us. And I was saying like, okay, come on to us, relax. We need to show uh, a, a simple picture from Gaza to show it to people. And then they can feel maybe united or united or feel they are okay, Gaza still bleeding or uh, make them rem remember Gaza, remind them of Gaza. This is what I can do. I, don't, I will not free Gaza. I don't have the magic stick to make a, like a, 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 a high artistic 
reaction in the street. So I brought, I brought the guys, my students in the school, I like, okay, guys, uh, we need, we want to do something for Gaza, uh, uh, to be with them and to remind people the war is not finished because that's another problem. Like the life is so fast, uh, people need to work, people need to eat. And suddenly like you feel yesterday, Yesterday is the war, yesterday is the killing, yesterday is the explosions, yesterday all this what happening and how, how the Israelis is smart because you know they control the business, they control everything. So they open some borders, they open some checkpoints and the business start to move and for sure the people uh, in, in the business or in the, in the markets, they, they want to, to work, they want to be able to open the shops. And that's the, the, the crazy thing, like in, in three days, I was looking around me like, why life feelings like it's nothing happened, it's normal, that, that it, the people from 48 start to come to Janine or Nablus or Turkmen start to buy, and you see, that's how they will make people calm down and relax when there is some work, some money, some, and they're like, no, 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 there is something wrong. We have to tell people we are not finished, and this is just, another way of the Israeli, how they manipulate situation. So uh, I told the guys, let's try. What do you think the most uh, 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 close picture to your mind when, when, you, when you say Gaza? For sure, they said rubble, uh, blood, uh, people come uh, out with the dust and blood. I said, okay, that's it. We don't want more, just to make people uh, uh, link these pictures to Gaza. So we made this kind of uh, blood dust. Uh, we were, I asked the guys to, che to choose a character and a small monologue from this character, uh, how they walk, they made some choreography uh, to react to people. But I asked them, don't, because it was a trial in Jenin. Like we were doing a trial, we're not doing the full performance because I want to see how people receive, how people react. And for sure, I, had, uh, I have a small tuk-tuk and I did the same, so I can be the same in, in the picture. But when we come into the city, people will look at us really like in a shock way. They don't know who we are. Uh, they were in shock, like, is this real? Is this accident? Is this a fight? And they will start to come to me, ask me, are you okay? You want to go to hospital? And, you know, some funny guys, Oh, zombies, oh, 2020, what life is gonna bring more? Corona, zombies, what is this? And you know, people start to walk uh, behind us, start to film us. And actually yesterday, some guy showed me a small video uh, for them on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Mm -hmm. And it's 400,000 view for one video. And just when we arrive back to, to the theater, uh, because the, the, the boss of the theater about this, the first time we see this kind of views and reactions, like the numbers, it's really high. Even the guy from radio from the city, he was surprised because he also uh, put this in news in his uh, uh, page in Facebook and he called us and he's like a first time I have this kind of reaction. Yeah. But people were were really shocked, like even people start to call my father, my, my friends, is Tobasi okay? We hear that he had an accident. The other guys start to call the people. Even now, my students became famous in Janine, each one meeting them, say hi. But what has surprised me, not easy for the people in Janine to link these pictures to Gaza because we didn't put any word or anything, obviously, talks about, about Gaza, it's just the pictures. Uh, and, you know, we link like the characters, uh, you know, the, the guy who lost uh, his fiance, uh, his look and what he says, the, the, the child who saved the small fish from his house. We had the character of the small fish. So we choose like a famous accident, but still people didn't link it directly to the scene, which is for me is very dangerous because that's, that's the division even we live in ourselves. Uh, uh, but as soon as they know it's Gaza, they will respect. They will like, yes, uh, good job, guys, go. Uh, uh, okay, but still, uh, that talks about really how the occupation, uh, 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 in a way, his success to make Gaza in a space, it's a different world. So even, even for us as a Palestinian, 
uh, as a Palestinians, we really think, yeah, it's Gaza. It's not Palestine, you know, it's Gaza. It's, it's, it's acceptable to have war in Gaza. It's acceptable to have 300, 400,000 get killed in Gaza because this is Gaza. And that's the crazy uh, 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 propaganda for humanity, how the occupation, the Israelis make things get acceptable. Like Palestinians, they're not talking anymore about the wall. They're not talking anymore about the checkpoints became part of our life. And now Gaza to have war each three, four years and destroy all these uh, buildings and destroy all and kill all these people. The repetition of the information for us as a human, we start to accept like, yeah, this is Gaza. I mean, Gaza is not a, it's not a heaven. It's not a, a nice place. It's a war. And that's what also the, the, the Israelis, propaganda Israelis made West Bank or Palestine. Yeah, it's the area conflict. So what, is, what Israel is doing, it's acceptable. Not because you accept it, it's because the repetition of the place, it's like it's a conflict. If an explosion or people get killed and even the human became bored, the world became bored, uh, the international community became bored, we as the Palestinians, we became bored of ourselves. The, the, the story, it's again and again and again, and there is no end, there is no solution. Uh, uh, but for the performance, we didn't even organize with the PA or with the police. So the police themselves, they were in a confusion, big confusion. They're getting a lot of messages uh, uh, on the, you know, uh, the radios that uh, there is people with the blood walking in the streets. So like the army came to me with the, with the police and like, who are you? What is happening? What are you doing? And, you know, <laughs> easily try to make them come down like we are a theater, we're doing a sketch, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing. But even they were like in a high level tension looking for these people in the city. Uh, uh, and for me, that's, that's the shock. And you know, as the Freedom Theater also, the Julian, the main founder of the theater, his strategy was to shock people, even his students, uh, which is make conflict for us. And we understood it a, a long time after but yeah, now we know the shock. And for me, yes, we're gonna do the show again after tomorrow in Nablus, which is another big city. And I'm expecting to have more crazy stuff and more crazy news. But now we're gonna do the film performance like monologues and choreographies. And it's known about the people in Nablus. They are really, when they talk about a subject, it will go all over uh, the social media and the West Bank. So we're going to do it in Nablus, Tolkarim, and uh, after three days, we'll do it in Ramallah, which is uh, maybe we get arrested. So if we get arrested, just uh, mention us uh, <laughs> free, free to the, <laughs> to the artist of the Freedom Theater. Free, the but, Freedom yeah, Theater. I love, I love the street. I love the street. And I think uh, also, as, as, an, as an art and a performing art, I think uh, the modernity and technology take us away from the street, which is I think we should come back and we should focus again on the street because I think it's, it's, it's direct connection with the audience. Uh, uh, it doesn't make us uh, um, be in different world and strange uh, from the reality. Like if people see theater and art and perform, performing in, in, in the streets, the idea of art, the idea of artists, the idea of performing will be part of daily life and uh, a culture that the people uh, uh, live in. But if we do it just in a boxes, in a special uh, places, in a theaters, in a, in a special time, it will be like something aside and for a special people. But I think art should be everywhere all the time for all the people. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the shock uh, that you were kind of anticipating from the audience that was unsuspecting that this was a performance. And in the States anyway, there's a lot of conversation about uh, the efficacy, the usefulness, um, or the morality of putting violence into your art pieces, depicting um, something that could re-traumatize someone, all this kind of, this ethical decision-making in our artwork. So as far as this performance goes, was that useful 
for you to depict um, these scenarios and, and talk about these again? Is it important that you keep doing that? Uh, it is it is important to keep doing that and I know because I was live, living in Norway and this is kind of low it's like people uh, uh, really taking care of not violence be careful if you have to show this kind of pictures uh, and especially people like in Norway they don't have that much war in somehow but suddenly a guy from Norway will come with a big car and explode the middle of the city and kill uh, uh, 73 young people in a small island with all these peace, with all these, you know, calms, still. And that's for me, it's different when you push these pictures or it's reality and you bring it as what it is. I, I mean, I'm not trying to fake life. I'm not trying to scare people. I'm not trying. This is what is going on. Why? Why the people of Jenin will be scared of seeing somebody having blood in their face if each day there is people in the street get killed. Like, why is this scary and this is not scary? Yeah, and you see what I mean? We live each day. I don't think there's a Palestinian who don't have a member in the family who are not in prison or their houses uh, invaded by soldiers or one of the family get killed or injured or, 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 or. And this is reality. And for me, uh, uh, the idea is to make people move, talk, and we cannot just uh, put the fake pictures and we tell people, uh, give people flowers and they'll tell them, woohoo, life is nice. It's not nice. This is, this is reality. And I think art is a reflection. We, we reflect of what is going on. And I'm not really trying to do something big. It just, I took a picture and put it again in, a, in, a, in another place. I, I, I didn't change it. I didn't make anything with it. I just took it from Gaza, put it in Jenin which is in Jenin, the invasion in 2002, it happened much more crazy. But that's also the other problem. How generation uh, will be following what is going on in uh, what, what, what was happened even before? How different cities, how different villages uh, in Palestine and Palestinians, as I told you, we are not connected. Like people in Jenin, they are not really aware what is going on in Hebron, which is three hours from Jenin. People in Ramallah don't live and know what is going on in Jenin camp. I mean, even in Jenin city itself, where we have one kilometer between the camp and the city, people in the city they are not really aware what is going on and how life is in Jenin camp. And this, all this division makes, makes a, a, a big problem. Uh, even uh, uh, the people uh, uh, in, the, in the last war, like from 48, from uh, Gaza, from West Bank, even from outside, whole Palestinians, the first time for, for me, I feel we united somehow. And then we affect the world. We affect the world in one week, but it doesn't last long. That's the problem. Uh, there is a lot of challenges. There is a lot of uh, 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 agendas around us it make, yani, and for me, this is the solution I was always talking about. If we can get together, united as a Palestinians, here is the solution. It's everything will be easy after. Everything is very easy. And yani you see how much the Israelis having these walls and the uh, tanks and army. For me, this is nothing if we got united. Uh, and I believe in that. And for me, this is the problem. If you see a picture in the street with the blood and then you get scared, uh, yani I'm not living in Norway. We are not Norway. We are not in New York and uh, Philadelphia and California and Chicago. I don't know, Las Vegas. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, my, my childhood, I, I, brought, I born in the camp, shooting, uh, killing, uh, prison, invasions. Until today, I'm losing my friends. I lost my, all my friends and I still losing my friends. So why are you expecting me <laughs> to do something different? Like even when we do theater uh, and we start to go to the, especially uh, Arab countries, oh, Palestinian, are you not bored of your, your case? You're gonna talk again about the occupation. I mean, why are you expecting me to talk about something else? Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, come live my life for one year and I want to see what you're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. 
not all your life. I want you to come to live in Jenin camp for one month and I want to see your uh, 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 art, what talking about. And that we bring it back again. Yes, because that's what they want. The, the, the normalization, the Israeli, the propaganda, the West, they want the Palestinian artists to come on, talk about peace, talk about life, talk about the space, talk about nice things. They don't want us to talk about, about reality, about what is going on. And for me, this is very dangerous. And no, we will talk about what is going on in Palestine. And this is the responsibility of the artist. And as I said it many times, always we got offers uh, from before, not now anymore, but before we got many offers and the projects and a lot of money to talk about women and children and bees and live together and, 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 but this is the responsibility. Are you going to choose the money or are you going to talk about reality and show the picture of what is going on? And for me as a filmmaker, a theater director, actor, no, the Palestinian case should be in everything, in every side, in every corner, until we get to free. If you make Palestine free, I promise I will talk about uh, uh, many difference. I will talk about why banana, it's not straight and it comes like uh, this shape. And I will talk about why the sex in Palestine doesn't last very long. Uh, or I will talk about my feelings when I remember the uh, uh, islands in Haiti uh, and I want to taste the different cocktails while I'm uh, sitting under the sun. It sounds nice, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking just about children, actually, because the way that you first saw theater was as a child in Palestine, yeah. And this affected you for the rest of your life. So, yes, there are, you're talking about the occupation, but uh, the Freedom Theater is also known for having children's workshops and doing children's theater. And on top of that, there are children seeing these street performances and getting open into what is theater and how does it affect our, our life, especially when you're young and you may not understand everything. So when you said earlier, you know, like why to bring more children into the world when all of this is happening, how do you see this young generation, these kids that are looking around at everything, that are also watching the way that you're applying theater. What is the, what is the hope that you have for them? And what is the opening? Are you opening the door for them to also come and have the discussion with you if they come and they say, hey, I, I don't know how I feel. Can I come here and express it with you? And I know you were newly appointed as the artistic director, so I don't know if there's even more of a respons responsibility to also open that door and hold that space for these young children that may not understand what they're seeing, but know that they're seeing something that is life-changing? Uh, I think before, before we, I or I, or we were believing the lie of changing the community. Like we, we, I think it's a lie that theater will change a community, will change the country, will free Palestine. I think it's a lie and people use it maybe just to make you forget uh, a period or to you move to other period. But today I arrive, uh, my, the theater and what we're doing, it's not just, yani, it's not for changing the community, it's to challenge the community. I believe we have to challenge the community and to make sure that this doors will stay open. So maybe a child or one child or one girl they need this chance and they need this uh, space to be different and express themselves. That's what I believe. But for children, a long time ago, I was you know, always uh, part of this kind of summer camps and uh, activities for children. And yeah, that's for me, it's a bit uh, uh, local. Uh, but when we come to the children, I don't connect to the, to the reality. We, we sing, we have fun, uh, we put the music, we dance, we play, and some angry people will come like, I don't respect what is going on, even there is a martyrs. I don't care, I will give them the time they have to have. Uh, and then when they grow up, they will face the reality. But for me, no, I, I'm not so, I mean, with all this disappointment and somehow you can feel in my voice, but when it comes to children, no. Uh, uh, I will just 
turn uh, 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 the button and all the activities like now we prepare a big summer camp with all these activities and we try to make it it's if you see the pictures or you see the videos or you see the activities you think really there is a problem in palestine uh, and that's their right and i believe they have to have the right condition environment to grow up healthy at least because i know everything else is not healthy in their life but we try to have a part healthy and feel they are children. And that's another problem for the, the children. They're not growing up as a children in Palestine. Uh, uh, like, you know, in very young age, you have to be responsible, you have to work, you have to be, and maybe you have to be in prison. And you could see in this media, all these videos and pictures, children, it's like, uh, uh, like any other, uh, 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 people as a Palestinians, they get arrested, they get killed, they will get tortured. They, 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 and for me, it's like, but even though, like, it's really young children, like any soldiers, why he would arrest a, a very young child? Why you will storm a, a house in the middle of the night to arrest a, a child of five years? I mean, I don't really understand it. To storm a school, a whole school to arrest Two children, I don't know what they did. Maybe, maybe they throw a stone. Maybe they made a sign for a soldier. And this angry soldier have to storm all this uh, school to arrest one child. So for me, yani, I, uh, uh, as I say, sometimes uh, if we think um, uh, too much, uh, we will make things more complicated. Uh, and for me, I, I sometimes I don't need to think, I need to react. Uh, uh, especially with the, with the cases of children or women. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the activities we do, even the theater, uh, uh, I try to include all these kind of metaphors in our life, but I really try to make it uh, as a children theater. And even now they're making theater from children to children. So uh, I'm not even put myself inside. Uh, but no, I think these children have to wake up uh, and have, they have to grow up uh, on an idea uh, and they have to know what is going on, not be, you know, taken aside. And when they grow up, they will like, oh, this is our life. Yes, it's our life. Children and young people facing really uh, uh, all this kind of uh, traumatizing, uh, crazy, a situation they don't even know what nobody talking about. Yani, we don't have this kind of knowledge and culture uh, for the children that the families, the parents, the centers, the organizations talk to children and tell them what is going on. This is a war and this is happened and this is happened. What you feel uh, if you think this is good or bad. We don't have at all this. Maybe there is some people who are trying to do some kind of uh, things about this but it's, very, it's for very small groups. And I think in, in, in age of 15, like, you know, for me, last uh, week, uh, somebody went out from the prison and you know, when somebody go out of the prison, the whole guys will come start shooting for him, cheering, whatever, which is a very crazy scene. And I never go to this kind of event but because you know they were shooting and they cut the electricity and the internet which is each day happened plus for other things so i went out to see what is going on and i saw young people with these guns and they think it's fun they think it's uh, hero work it's like and for me it's for me i see it as like a sick a sick picture it's a crazy picture and all this young, very young children collecting bullets, like empty bullets between them. And I mean, I look and I'm really scared and everyone tell me, Tvasi, you are, you are not from the camp. Uh, why are you scared? They're shooting. And I, guys, guys, this scene, this scene, I mean, I won't, I won't really to film it, but if I film it, I will make a problems for myself. Like, I really want to film it and to show world, look what is going on in Jinin camp. They think this is normal. Uh, children between this, all these guns shooting, and they think it's fun. If anyone from the world see this picture, he will think we are fucked. 
We need the hospitals. We don't, we, I mean, I, we need hospitals. I think the whole Palestinians, all Palestine need hospitals because I cannot imagine this kind of scene where any second, any accident could happen. Uh, I, I don't know, you, you, you know what I mean? And I'm standing there and I'm really like, oh, no, 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 I even cannot be there. I really run away. I really run away. Even they laugh at, at me. Even they're like, oh, Tabasi, you become, I don't know what, but it's a crazy scene shooting each day. That's what I mean, like children living this fact, living this uh, reality, shooting each day, uh, army each day, friends get killed, they have to have responsibility. And that's the problem. This kind of an example, it's became like a model where young people, they have a future, they want to be fighters, they want to be martyrs, they want to be uh, wanted people which is, no, we want you to be uh, uh, actors, engineers, doctors, uh, and that doesn't make the case a weak or doesn't make, because that's a problem also. Uh, the, the community, the people, the young people believe we have to fight in only in one gun. I don't say, I, I'm not saying we have to fight in a, in, a, in a specific way, in one way. I think we have to create the culture of resistance doesn't matter in how, but you have to consider everything as resistance. And when you create this kind of, of title, then you can resist in any way you can, not just in guns. Yes, maybe we need guns, I'm, I'm not sure, but still, yani we, we need uh, teachers, we need the uh, uh, young people to go to schools, we need them to be creative, we need them to, to, to be in theaters, uh, in, in everything that they, I mean, even the driver, even my mom in the house, if she, have this kind of culture that I'm doing culture resistance, then yeah, whatever we do, because simply Israeli fighting us in all ways possible, like uh, in theater, in movies, in uh, 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 cooking, even oh. uh, fashion shows, yeah. even like with everything. So it's simple to, to, to answer them in the same way, in, in every way possible too. And that's the problem because even for theaters, even for uh, artists, still in the community we face that, the Palestinian community, I'm talking about the normal people, uh, not really the, uh, because also there is a different kind of communities in Palestine. But still like in the camp, they don't consider what I'm doing is something useful. useful. They think I'm lost. They think I'm even sometimes danger on them, on their culture, on their case. So still like, uh, a long way to wear, but this is the reality. Uh, at least in the end, we can say this is the reality. I don't care they are children or not. And one day they will grow up, but they will at least you put the seeds on them. And when they grow up, maybe maybe they will notice. Maybe they will be different. Maybe they will understand. But yani, it's difficult mm -hmm. to to really think about all these things and make everything right for uh, everyone. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me like you're talking a bit about a shift in culture. And one thing I notice, especially in countries that are under occupation, when I go Google Palestine, um, when I go Google Bosnia or Mexico, a lot of times you see like these images of war you don't see the traditional dress or a wedding photograph or some music being played or the real culture and the real people and what they bring to the, the earth. So um, that sort of starts to become erased on the global stage. And I've, I think that theater is a place where we can, it's a vessel to preserve the culture um, mm. and keep those stories being told. So I wanted to ask you, about that and do you feel like there's a the that undercurrent being buoyed and continuing underneath all of this is there still a deep connection to your roots yeah that's i mean uh, uh, is what you're saying is very important because that's that's the identity where that's the culture we're talking about it's a culture the way you live the way the, the way you eat what you eat what you dress all this is a culture and when you lose that then you have no connection to the land you are standing on and that's very important and that's what the Israeli try to do they want to make you empty so you will feel no connection to this land to this 
uh, 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 area, to this culture, then it's very easy to give up. It's very easy to leave. It's very easy to say like, why I should fight or why I should hold on in this case. I have no connection to it at all. And that's what they're trying to do. And they're doing the opposite. They're trying to make the, all these lies, all these scenarios to make the young generation of the Israelis get more connected to this land as a history, as a religion. And you know, most of the Israelis, they are not religious, huh? but they, they make the connection as a religious. So they want to make the, the, the relation to this land, to this case, more strong so they will fight. Because you know, the first intifada or the beginning of the second intifada when the, when the intifada uh, kicked off, the, most of the Israelis prepared their passports, second passports, and they want to leave. Like, why I should die and live this kind of life here? I mean, nothing uh, connect to me to die here for what? But then they, they know what they're working on. So after, after that time, they start to make all these kind of relations to this religion, history, land. And there is a lot of crazy stuff what they're doing to connect, to connect the Israelis and young generation. Uh, and, you know, if you go to the Israel, the guns everywhere like young people, soldiers, uh, normal people, settlers, they have guns everywhere. And they don't know they are sick too. You know what I mean? They don't know they, they destroy their community in somehow by, by this. Like if you go to the Hebron, the settlers, young age people having an M16, which is longer than him. And they are angry, drunk, attack Palestinians in the night. Very violent, very violent. And I remember this show, I, sh I saw it by an Israeli artist, dancers. I forget his name. He was talking about not really Palestine, but he talks about the violence, the incubation by you doing to the Palestinians, you create a crazy violence to the generation inside Israel, let's say, the, the community of Israel. And they become more angry. And for me, when I see how the soldiers react to the Palestinians in Jerusalem, in West Bank. I mean, they will talk about it when they got 50. That's the problem. They will start to face the trauma of violence, how, what, what, what they were doing to the Palestinians. Uh, uh, and they will start to talk about it like, yeah, I don't know what happened, but we were storming in the houses, killing people, shooting, uh, shooting do all that. But now he's young, he will not face it. When he got a bit old, he will start having a problems, nightmares, whatever, and he will say, oh, I should not did that. But that's the other thing. I will not <laughs> talk about, about them. <laughs> but that's, that's the problem, to uh, take the identity out of the Palestinian, uh, the tra tradition, the way we live. Because if you go back before, let's say, about 20s, the 20s, you will see the clear pictures of how Palestine was symbol, tradition, the way we eat, the dresses, uh, the mosques, let's say the culture around the farming, all that, uh, it was very strong. Like our money, uh, what was drawing in our money, uh, the signs of our uh, uh, culture. Uh, it's, it, uh, when, I, when I look to the Janine pictures, it's very beautiful with the trees, with the water. It's like really was a heaven. It's in simple way. It's really talks of like very simple, you know, the movie Avatar. It's really Avatar, it's Avatar. And now you look at it, wow. And for me, I noticed this because I live, I, I live in Norway. I was traveling, I was seeing other countries, meeting other people, meeting other traditions, meeting other culture. And when I come back here, uh, I say, wow, my people do not know what is going on in the world, simply because they are not traveling. They can't travel. It's very, very uh, little a group who can travel. And most of them, they are like a business people where they go to China, to Turkey, to, to, to make deals, but not like as a vacation. Imagine. And what, that's what I was saying. We need to travel. For me, part of the resistance Palestinians have to travel to know what is life, to know what is going on in the world, how people live. I believe me, most of the Palestinians think the whole world is like Palestine. Like there is checkpoints and wars and wars, I don't know what. They don't know, they don't know like my father, my mother will never left Palestine in a way. Like imagine my mother goes to Barcelona and sit in the beach and see like how people live. 
the museums of art, the all I mean to Paris uh, to go to the Louvre Museum and see how all this art drawings, what it means. My mom will come back and she will think in different way how to deal with the situation in, in the floor, how she live. And I think it's exactly about existing, how to exist. This is very important. Uh, you want to exist to be a prisoner for another 300 years, or you want to exist in a way that you feel you existing in, in somehow, identity, a culture, a tradition, uh, it's very important. And you know, the Israelis copying, copying everything from Palestine and, <clears throat> and they try to turn it as an Israeli. It's a Jews, uh, and that's the problem. They're using the heritage of Jews. They're stealing the heritage of Jews because yes, Judaism is very old. It's a religion, have a history. And this country or this system, for me, the only way it can exist is to steal and use the Jewish heritage and history. So give, it, give, it give them the permission to stay more, to make people believe them uh, uh, as a religion, as a history. But yeah, I think even hummus, if you go to India, which is very, really, it's very disappointing. It's really hurting when you go to India. I mean, in London, when I enter, when I enter a, a, a restaurant and I find hummus, like, oh, hummus, I want hummus. And in the, in the menu, it's like Israeli hummus. You go to India, the signs of the restaurants, it's in Hebrew, in like, like an Israeli Hebrew, not even Hebrew as, as, a, as a, a Jewish language. Uh, falafel, you know, falafel. It's like Israeli falafel, Israeli tabbouli, Israeli hummus. You see how, how they're smart and they're, how much they're working on things that give, they give them permission to exist. I mean, despite the art, all the Israeli councils in the world, they will put a lot of money to festivals, to uh, uh, theaters, to movements, to include Israeli artists and culture, because you, you see, they want to put uh, uh, themselves in everywhere as an art scene. And then you take permissions to be there, uh, to be normal, to be part of what is going on in the world. And this is, and this is not just an art, they work in everything. And you know, as an Israeli Zionism movement, which is the most dangerous thing in US, they're controlling everything. They are the richest people in newspapers, TVs, reality shows, uh, elections, everything. They just give money and then everything will be changed. And that's the problem. I mean, how are we going to face all that as an identity more than I make a play, a summer camp, and save this place to tell the children, this is, this is who we are. Let's have fun. And we, later, we're gonna, you're going to face the reality and then but i want you to get i want you to to, to be strong to, to know how to tell the story to see what is mean theater how you can play how you can have small tools maybe in the future you could use them because what is going on and what it comes later it's really difficult well um speaking about the u.s uh the u.s is the funding of all of israel so Israel has a model, a very strong model of how to erase uh, history and how to insert um, uh, America, sorry, U.S. has a, a very strong uh, model of how to erase history and how to erase culture, which obviously has happened with the Native American genocide and obviously the slaves uh, bringing slave culture. Um, as speaking as a Palestinian to people that live in the U.S., which at many times when you hear people talking about Palestine or the Middle East, it's always a over there issue. Um, it's happening over there or it's so crazy that, you know, we can't even handle it when people have, been, have this idea that it's been going on for thousands of years when in reality it's only been going on for about 73 years, um, th that this, this fighting, this back and forth in the middle of the Middle East. So... As American, North Americans that are complicit in this as well, and maybe do not understand how they are. Um, also, we have uh, people in Colombia that are part of our of our uh, collective, and the U.S. also funds, you know, what is happening in Colombia and, and, and all the murders and disappearances and the police force. And Israel is the police force. The IDF is the one that trains the whole world. So the knee to the neck and the whole nine minutes George Floyd killing people this way, that's an IDF tactic that's 
taught all over the world. So we are not separated in any kind of way. And the U.S. is very much, if not the biggest part of why this is happening. What do you have to say to North Americans that may not understand how much of a voice they need to have. Because also, let's say in the time of the Native American genocide, there was no internet, there was no mass media communication happening in a very, like, to the second nanosecond all over the world. We have that now, and we see the people rising up for Palestine all over the world and uniting. So what is it that they can understand that, what is their role as opposed to just, oh, it's the Israelis, or no, I mean, we are also sitting here with a role. What is the best role that you think that we can take? Because there's also an issue with trendy politics, people jumping on trends, and then, oh, I support this, and then I'm on to the next thing. How do you, what advice can you give to people that are part of it, just as much as an Israeli soldier is, or just as much as the government is, while you're sitting over here on the other side of the world? I mean, uh, I think uh, it's the same idea of Palestine. I think uh, the, the Israeli or the Israeli system or the Israeli country will be changed if this link uh, between Israel and New York or Washington get cut or finished. When it's finished, it's very easy to change. And I think it's the same idea for the whole world. When we as a people, as a humanity, connect and be one, and we have make one movement that we can push uh, for what we ask, it will be a, a lot strong. Like, I mean, the Colombian, the uh, Afghani, Afghani people, Yemen people, uh, uh, the, the, the Rohingya, the Rohingya people, the Mexican, uh, everyone, I mean, we have the same example in each country. Why we cannot connect each other and all this power and boycott? I mean, the boycotting, it's not, it's, it's something very effective. When we boycott the uh, product, the uh, US product, the Israeli product, this is something will make effect on the business, on the money, uh, and for sure uh, uh, things will be changed because uh, everything is also about money, uh, for sure. And I'm saying uh, uh, for, for, for th these countries, like especially North America, where they have the uh, direct effect even from the U.S. Uh, and all this history, how, how U.S. trying to control uh, them and affect even their election, their politics, their, their... The only way is to come together uh, 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 and to know more about each other. We can support each other. Yes, it's a very weak for me to support uh, uh, this people or that people by Facebook or by a word. But no, today there is, there, is, there is this social media stuff, which is the easiest thing you can do. You can say no. You, 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 we, we don't need more to say people say no for what is going on. And this is... The, the people will study these things, will see how many people say no, how many, and for sure it will affect how they think, it will affect how they will do things. And that's for me, for sure, uh, 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 Mexican, Colombian, Brazilian, uh, uh, whole Africa, whole Africa is still under the colonization, a French uh, uh, country, which surprised me when I was in Congo, like, it's very clear with all what is going on, they still under this kind of control. And for me, guys, African, if they come together, uh, Latin America, if they come together, Arabs, Middle East, and then we have link, it will be very easy to uh, uh, change anything, change election, change power. People, we have the power. Uh, the people, they are much more strongly, we have the power to change everything. And the idea of you can do nothing, or giving up, or oh my word, what will do? No, it will do. Uh, yes, sometime I, I will be disappointed, but no, the, the easiest thing you can talk about what is going on, tell the truth. And I think today everyone have Facebook, everyone have uh, Instagram, everyone have an email. I mean, if the Facebook close our accounts, let's open a new Facebook, call it Palestine, Facebook, whatever, or Mexican uh, Facebook, and then you will make money and then you have 
a platform to, 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 to express and talk about what is going on. But yeah, we need to say no. We want to show solidarity. I'm not saying come and fight in Palestine or send us money. And I don't like money because money is corruption everywhere all the time. I'm saying just to stand up and say no. No to the, what is going on. I'm not saying let's kill the Israelis. I'm not saying let's kick them to the sea. I'm saying we want to live. We, I want to live. I am tired. I want to live. I want to go to the sea. I want to travel. I want to create a family. I want to have a children. Not thinking like why I, ha I, I, I want to have a children. For example, many young people uh, uh, in, in, in the camps, they are really the Israelis. For me, it's, it's a system where they're putting a, a lot of chemical drugs, a lot of guns, and the whole tension and focus not about their life or future or what, what, what is going on. It's about how to bring money to buy drugs, how to bring money to buy gun and be strong or a stolen car. Uh, for me, uh, 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 I believe when I start to support the uh, climate change uh, movement, uh, because in a way, it start to open a lot of uh, uh, teams in the world. And for me, it became like a global movement. And I support them because I believe if this movement became big and all over the world and they agree on one thing, then they will have the voice and the power to change things. Uh, let's start from a global warming about uh, the climate change, but maybe later we're going to talk about Palestine. Maybe we talk about Colombia and these people can affect the world by their opinion. So I believe in one big movement can really affect the world for humanity and responsibility all over the world. And inshallah, which is my dream to have Palestine and the flag of Palestine and the border of Palestine. But I believe, inshallah, in the future to destroy all these flags, destroy all these borders and come on, open it. Let the people travel, work, live, move as they want because exactly politicians, politicians and the business people want to divide us more and more, more and more, so they can control us in a very easy way. It's, it's a Palestine, it's a small example uh, uh, for the planet, for the global. It's really a very uh, small example for what is going on uh, in, the, in the global, to divide people and uh, 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 rule them, which is the Israeli uh, way of doing things. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think, which is very difficult to get united, united, uh, it's, a, it's a solution. Mm -hmm. Speaking of this small example, which is actually a huge global example at the same time, um, we have a, a member um, that is from Taiwan, <clears throat> sorry, uh, that is from Taiwan that couldn't be with us and is super interested in the work of the Freedom Theater and in the state of uh, the state of Palestine. Um, he had a question that he wanted me to, to deliver because he said, or that he wanted us to deliver, which is, there's many comparisons between Taiwan and Palestine. Um, they're both not internationally recognized as nations. They're both still dealing with political persecution, military threat, and there are even books about it, um, one of them being unrecognized nations. And the similarity in those, uh, in those different countries, in those different nations, what is your opinion or what do you have to say to a somebody else that also is in the same position you are across the world that is inspired by the work that you also do and also in the same situation themselves so uh, he really wanted to relay that and and ask your opinion on from one unrecognized nation to another yeah what are the connections there no i feel, i mean it's the same question uh, 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 that uh, really you don't need uh, and you will get tired but don't give up don't give up for what you believe in because that's what they want they, they want you to give up i mean yes it's a different names it's a different colors but we have the same issue we have the same problem there is always people want to control making money and use the poor people, the humanity, the normal for their uh, <clears throat> interests. And I want to tell you, <clears throat> please watch Arna's Children. You can find it on the internet. And this is an example for me. It's like 
an example repeated itself all the time in different countries. Giuliano was in Israel, in Tel Aviv, a famous actor, uh, uh, doing uh, uh, shows for the Israelis, they clap to them, and he go down and he start to think, what I'm doing while my friends uh, get killed in Jenin camp. In the end, he looked for the responsibility, the identity of what, what he was looking for, and he decided to open the Freedom Theater. I think we need to find and use the ways, smart ways, to express ourselves and react and to reach our voices to the world. And for me, I'm not saying guns, violence, all of that. For me, if like when I say, if I can change an Israeli mind, this is for me the, the victory, not to kill him. To kill him is very easy or he can kill me. But if you can change the Israeli mind, if you can change the Israeli opinion, this is the victory. Uh, and in Vietnam, in Afghanistan, in Yemen, where even like Yemen, the, the attacks and the war, it's with Arab, not even with like Americans or like a different uh, nation. It's like Saudis, brothers, uh, uh, and same religion, same, same culture, same, same area. Th they, they were killing them because yes, there is a benefit, there is a use for everything. What I'm saying, uh, look for the tools that can uh, put you in the front, can make the world hear you and do not give up because yes, the only thing we have, it's to holding in something that not makes us disappear. And for me, Freedom Theater, theater, it's the only thing I, I, I live for. Be, believe me, I live for this. I live for theater. I live for Freedom Theater because if this, that's what I find, it makes me to continue. If this goes, uh, I will be a normal person, go back to Norway, uh, drink all the time and uh, dream and I don't know what, just complaining, 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 complaining. Yes, it's difficult in the situation here, but this is what, what, keep, what gives me energy, what gives me hope to wake up next day. And if I'm not in the theater, I don't even, I don't want to wake up next day, for what? But there is a children, there is a new generation who don't know all about what I'm talking now. And they expect me to open the door of the theater and make a new play, make a new workshop. Uh, and you know, when I see the children sometimes passing the street from the school, they ask, Tabasi, uh, there is a theater? And like, uh, no, no, next week, next month, you know. And like, I, they remind me, I should not stop. They remind me, uh, no, there's people waiting me to do something. So my life is not about me anymore. It's not about me, it's not for me. It's about other people, it's about other young people. And invest, invest in children, really, in Taiwan and everywhere. Invest in children because they gonna, and simply, we used to hear this sentence, they are the future. But it's not just a sentence, it's really something, if somebody understand it, he knows how uh, 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 valuable it is. Invest in children, don't give up, you will get tired. And yes, I'm getting tired and I'm tired, but I know that I will not give up. And it's normal to get tired. It's you are a human, uh, you should get tired. You are not a machine, but don't give up. And our responsibility, you are an example because you don't know maybe how many people look at you and you are an example for them. So if you broke, imagine how many people gonna broke. So that's what I'm saying, it's not about you because you have to stand up uh, and enjoy, enjoy any small change you do. Enjoy any effect you do because this is the result gonna make you continue. It's the food for you, yeah. So it must be this regular practice that you engage in and theater is one of your vehicles for doing that. Can you, will you tell us about some of the current projects you're working on, like Revolution's Promise is <sighs> one I'm very excited for? Now we come for something, yeah, positive a bit. No, yes, I mean, it's positive, but it's still crazy. No, we're doing a new project called Revolution Promise. It's about an artist in Palestine. Uh, the faces, the, the, the struggles they face, the problem they face. We tell people like uh, the, the Palestinian artist 
could be shot, could be killed, could be arrested. Uh, it's like as any other Palestinian, he's not a different. Uh, so we're not doing our work as as an artist in in, in a special, you know, uh, vacation or uh, uh, you you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and this it's this uh, stories, it's based on uh, an interviews with these people, uh, like Muhammad Bakri, who made a, a film documentary about Jenin in 2002. And he maybe spent 15 years in the Israeli court defending his film and his film being taken and not allowed to show anymore. And even they made him paying a lot of money for the soldiers in the movie or whatever. It's crazy. Darin Tatur, which is a poet, she'd been like in sentence for three years just because a poet, a poem she wrote about herself, about freedom. And then she been in prison, uh, not allowed to talk or write or speak. Uh, Giuliano get killed for sure for, because we're doing theater. And there is many, many uh, of different artists, different cities. And all these interviews will be make, make, made to uh, a theater script. And we will stop for sure, send it. So because we're supposed to do it this year, but you know, Corona, and then we said, no, it's an important project. We don't want just, just to pass it like nothing. So next year in April, we will turn it to um, a theater uh, project, but for sure we were connected with uh, many artists in different, the way, in different, uh, different worlds to join us, express, with us in this project, in this text, in the way they think. And we got a small fund to do a small trial of this project on a, three, uh, on a virtual R, uh, virtual reality, VR. So we're gonna do uh, a small uh, uh, film that you can put it uh, in any way in the world and meet some of the artists and hear the stories uh, and for sure I will be in the movie, at least. <laughs> so you can meet me too. <laughs> uh, and yes, so in the way people can meet the artist, can hear the stories, can come to Palestine where they're sitting in the world. Just put the, the, the technology and please join us in our place in the theater, in the Freedom Theater uh, uh, with these artists. But I think it's a very important project because even for the Palestinians, we want to tell the Palestinians that the Palestinian artist, it's not an alien. It's not uh, something different. He lived the same reality, facing the same problems as any other artist, uh, as another, an, an, any other Palestinian. Because you know, Palestinians, especially in the camp, they think we are crazy. And we have a special mental uh, problems <laughs> that we need to go to hospitals. And we are not really part of, of their fight because we are an artist, you know. Uh, so no, it's, it's a very important project, but also we're doing a project about Gaza called Metro Gaza, uh, because you know, uh, Metro Gaza, it's a, an, uh, a Gazan artist, Mohammed Abu Sal, he went to Paris and you know, uh, then he went to the Metro and he saw the Metro, how big it is and there's many, <coughs> many stairs, many lines, and you know, Gaza, as the Israeli tried to, to say, like there is another city under Gaza, which is a lie because they want to make things big. So they have the excuse to, to destroy Gaza. But you know, uh, Gaza, we, we, they were using a small tunnels to bring food and things from Egypt, but then they destroy it. And um, Mohammed Absal, as an artist, he made metro in Gaza. He, so he imagined that Gaza have metro, they can move, they can uh, uh, visit each other from different station, but it's no metro, just he put the sign, you know, and people really ask, it's really a metro? Uh, but yeah, we're doing, we're doing this uh, play about Gaza in the end of this year. And um, we did uh, uh, currently uh, a play called Kufiya made in China. Uh, with my students and uh, I directed. It also talks about the moment that the Palestinian don't notice in their life. Like they will never talk with, the, like if you talk about a parents 
their son get killed and when they go to the hospital to, to, to check him or to be sure it's their child, they start to talk about him as like, is he okay? What he like, what he don't like, how he, his marks in the school, uh, what he's doing, whose uh, friends he have. And they never had this conversation because of the busy life. And the only time, for example, the, like when he died, they, rem they remember to talk about this. For example, a wife and a husband, they will never have uh, this conversation about themselves, about what they feel and what they talk, just when they stand on the checkpoint, because this is the only time that there's somebody else made them to talk to each other. And like this kind of moments, which is really very sad, and is even as a Palestinian, the first time I noticed like, yeah, we're doing this, uh, to each other, like we, we don't have a family time somehow as a, as a part of our culture. We don't go out together and talk or like in the house, we don't get, gather in a living room to talk about how you feel, what you did today, blah, blah. It's a crazy life. But yeah, and we're planning to make an American play called My Arab, but we will adapt it to a Palestinian situation, inshallah, next year. And we're planning to do a project with a company from Italy uh, and talks about young people in Italy and Palestine. We're planning uh, to collaborate with a dance, uh, theater dance from Belgium who just work with children, like the, 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 the dancers work with children. So part of the place will be children and they have to, let's say, work with the children, how they feel, how they move and compare themselves. So the children will be part of this professional, let's say, uh, dance piece. So I mean, there is a lot, uh, 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 inshallah, in the future, if, if things open. And yes, we will not uh, give up and we want to work and do art and do plays, collaborate for sure. And especially for evolutionary promise, I hope as much as, as, as artists can in the whole world. And inshallah, by, by this project, we will get a network that artists will exchange their information, their problems. So like, for example, my friend in Taiwan, when we have this kind of connection, so in a Freedom Theater or in New York, when we have also start to talk about things, we will include him and his case and his problem as an artist and as a people. So we start to exchange our struggles and talk about it. Like for example, we can put a, a date, an event to talk about him and his issue in Taiwan and share it with all our friends, with all our audience. So the stories get to hear, to, to, uh, uh, the story people will know about it. And I think that's what, what we can do, which is not cost us a, a lot of money or time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave this interview without telling you how important uh, you are to me as an artist and an inspiration, you and um, Zoe and Faisal and everyone at the Freedom Theater and um, just the beautiful work that you're making for the entire world, uh, for all of our collective humanity, uh, not just from the point of view from which you come. So I thank you deeply for that and for taking the time to talk with us today and fill us in on everything uh, that's yeah, going on you. and that you're making. Yani, thank you uh, for, for this. Yani, at least uh, you tell me we hear you and I mean, you are very good listeners, which is, uh, uh, which is art itself, how to listen and how to give an ear uh, for somebody. It's, it's an art itself. And I, yani, yes, it's not uh, romantic what I'm saying. I hope people will not get the idea that we have a romantic time at the Freedom Theater. Like before three days, just uh, a guy, three guys storm in with their guns uh, to the theater. And really for me, I was just uh, not in shock, but I'm mesmerized like for one minute, look like what is going on? Is this a real gun come in the theater for what? And you didn't know he comes for what, for who, and it's like, is this scene happening everywhere? I don't know. Uh, my window being shot in somehow, I wasn't in the house, but I really, not sure. It is like, 
uh, I meant somebody meant to shoot my my window or it's uh, an accident or it's uh, I don't know what but when you come back to your room and you see a bullet uh, in your window uh, and the, the glass is all over uh, the, the room you see how your mind and the ideas come to you like I don't know what is going on is this real is this dangerous not dangerous it's um, I, I don't know but yeah it's not romantic but as I said we will not give up at least it's not romantic but it's real and the, you're sharing with us the reality um, if you maybe want to leave with just a message uh, to whoever's listening or something that you would want to relay as the last message before we, we, we end. Um, also, this will be broadcasted on the radio. So there are people listening from all over the place and in many places right now I'm in Mexico and the connection to Palestine is actually very strong here and people are paying a lot of attention to what's going on. So if you had a message that is just a global one, um, do you mind leaving us with that before we finish? No, inshallah, for Mexico, I said, when the, when the movement of the airplanes and the life open, inshallah, I promise I will come to Mexico and find a, a theater uh, company or a group and we will work together, inshallah. This is the, my, my uh, future uh, goal, inshallah. And in Taiwan, for sure, uh, please connect us and let's be together and any 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 point in the world just get in touch and exchange uh, our ideas uh, and see how we can help each other in any way we can uh, let's connect and that's very important let's connect and i'm saying uh, as an artist all over the world we have responsibility we feel different we think different we react different so it makes us more responsible about what is going on and what we're saying and which, which thing we're adopting. So please, uh, 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 if you can buy cut, anything can make change uh, in the floor, please do. Uh, support Palestine, we're still dying, we're dying, we're gonna die again. And in 2021, the only country under occupation in this way, in this picture, is still Palestine. And I'm really surprising, wondering, how in this time of this age where, where humanity think to move to the space, to another planet, we still have incubation in Palestine. So let's make different, let's make change and talk about the case, uh, stand with the, with, the, with, the, with the humanity. I'm not saying stand with any side, just to stand with the humanity and let's make a difference for a new generation. We have a bigger problem that we have to face uh, in the future, uh, technology, uh, global warming, uh, this place maybe after 100 will be a desert. So not either the Israelis or the Palestinians will use it. So why the fuck we fight uh, about what? Uh, and our lives, it's very short. And think about how your children, a new generation want them to live in again, the same things or really in different environments. So yes. Um, uh, I hope I hope the change will come soon and uh, live in a different situation, inshallah. Peace in a way that means peace. Inshallah. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. To uh, connect with the Freedom Theater, you can follow them on Instagram at the Freedom Theater. You can go to their website, uh, thefreedomtheater.org. And you spoke about a film um, by, directed by Giuliano called Arna's Children. And we also talked about a book called The Unrecognized Nations, which a uh, member of the Alimite Collective, Dennis Yuye Lee, suggested. Um, so that's just a quick review of how to connect um, with Ahmed and the Freedom Theater. Thank yes, you so much. And please, as always saying, visit us. Uh, as you take a vacation to any place, planet to Palestine, visit Palestine. Because when you see things, you will, I mean, Leigh, I spent maybe three months still here. Come, come, come until she come. And yeah, it's a great opportunity to get to know and meet people uh, in this equality. So yes, we are open. Uh, for your visit anytime and we want people to come to Palestine 
at least that's a big way to, to stand with Palestinians, to visit them and enjoy their culture and food and whatever. But yeah, uh, the reality, it's more different than what I'm saying. I hope I will not, I didn't make you feel uh, we are um, <clears throat> living in the mountains, but no, we are <laughs> yani, live and we have a life, but it's a bit difficult, that's it. <laughs> We're coming, don't worry. We're coming. <laughs> and we're going to bring people from other places well in the world. <laughs> yes. We'll be there and we'll see you in Mexico too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yes, yes, inshallah. Just open the, the flight and I'm coming, for sure. <laughs> Ella Tobasi, thank you so much. I know you're busy. Thank you for this. Thank you. Take care until we see you Take again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.